Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a thermocouple using a Thermex thermocouple welder from Thermex of California. This is a TIG welder inside a box contained specifically for welding thermocouples. It uses argon gas, it ha inside it has a TIG welding head, or a TIG welding head, argon gas port, so on and so forth. Today we don't have any argon gas, so we're just going to use canned air to uh, blow out the oxygen and contaminants in there. It helps some. It's better than nothing at all. So, Anyway, we will start with Type T Teflon coated thermocouple wire from Omega. The part number on that is TT-T-30-SLE. It's uh, copper and constantine wire. I said it's a 30 gauge. You have, when you strip it, you want to strip about three quarters of an inch to uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch and you want to use the strippers in such a manner that we'll get all three jackets because you have three jackets on here one on each wire and then one to contain both wires so once you get done stripping it you have a piece of wire with uh, two bare wires let's say one's copper one constantine and then you want to put it into the wire holder wire holder acts as a ground for your elect your electrode on your welder. Take some can air, blow it out on the inside. Then you say it should use argon. Turn it on. Um, I want to center that. Your electrode needs to be kind of pointed too, but that's good. You put the wire all the way in there. You want to make sure that the the insulation on the wire doesn't touch the copper on your wire holder otherwise you won't get a, a, a good weld at all so once you have that set in there just push it into the cavity welding cavity and push the weld button if you don't see an arc it means it didn't uh, weld so apparently I don't have the wire holder set properly What I'm doing now is readjusting my electrode on the welder. The wire got it too close to the electrode and it just latched on the end and just pulled it right out. So I'm uh, turning around. Your electrode has two ends on it. So instead of taking the time to clean the one end, we're just going to just go ahead and turn it around, reinsert it, and then adjust it to the proper depth using the depth adjustment tool. And there's a, a tightening knob on the back which is basically the head of the, the back of, of the head of your TIG welding head. Once that's done you want to make sure you re-strip your wires, cut off any excess wire that's not good, make sure you re-strip so you've got good clean wires right there, turn it back on. We want to reflush the system wire holder into the welding socket there we go just like that now you have a little thermocouple bead this one turned out really well it's kind of a, almost a kind of a gold color and that's what you're looking for it means you got a good clean weld on your bead this is good solid nice and round like it should be now what we're going to do with this because of our application is we're going to we're going to mash this ball on here flat that ball happens to be your actual thermocouple now you can mash this ball flat any way you want. I just prefer to use this particular pair of pliers. It works out really well to mash that thermocouple flat and you'll see why here in a moment why I'm doing this. So, so there you know you have a flat it's a thermocouple. Okay. All 
Okay, now, the reason why I smash this thermocouple flat is because what we're fixing to do with it now is we're going to super glue it onto a dim so we can do a thermal, thermal characterization of a set of dims for a high-end servo. So, go ahead and get a dim here. The first thing we want to do is, now you can put it on any chip on here. For our testing, what we normally do is we'll put one on each end here, or at one of the either ends on both of these here, and one on the buffer. But today we're just going to put one on here just to, for demonstration purposes. So I start off with Loctite 7452. This is an accelerator cleaner. I go ahead and spray that on there like so. Get everything really nice and clean and wet and ready to go. And in the meantime, stainless steel probe. I use the 45 degree angle probe. It seems to work out best for me, but you can use whatever you want. What you're going to be doing is you're going to take this thermocouple and you're going to take the end of this probe and hold this, this thermocouple down on top of there after you put the super glue on there. You take the super glue. This is a Loctite 382 instant adhesive. It's a large bottle, but you can buy just about any super glue. will do the trick if you're doing this just at home. You want to make sure it's viscous enough to do this so the gel it probably wouldn't work. You want something that's a little thinner. So you take this and kind of get it all in there so and just keep it moving because it'll solidify on if you don't. And then you take the probe and you hold it down right against the dim like so. You wait a few seconds for that to adhere to the top of that dim. And you pull it off. That's all you gotta do. Just let it dry. And that's ready to go to take uh, measurements on that. Your measurements on that are going to be fairly accurate. Um, as far as c conductivity as heat is concerned, I don't know uh, if the super glue on there is even negligible in that respect. 